What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you how to take an old worn out playset and restore it just like brand new. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I did it. When we moved into our house, the playset in the backyard wasn't in the best shape. And after five more years without any maintenance, it was really showing its age. So it was time to do something about it. I started off by taking care of a part that's been annoying me for a while. Now the kids never climb on this little rope wall, plus it was rotting and really worn, so I just lopped it off with my recip saw and hoped the kids didn't notice. Of course they did. After that I started taking off all the different accessories on the playset to prep for cleaning. The climbing handholds were bolted into threaded inserts and most came off easily. But on a few I had to break out the grinder and cut off the rusted insert from the back to remove them. I also removed some rotted boards on the bottom of the climbing wall that I'll replace with new cedar boards later. Now most everything else was just screwed in so I removed the handles, the screen, and the windows easily. And that slide made for easy egress while I was at it. There was this tic-tac-toe game inset in the side wall that was all busted up so I wanted to take that off as well. But I wasn't ready for this. Whoa. I'm out of here. Apparently my kids weren't the only ones enjoying the playset. Now after dealing with those ants, my younger son jumped in to help and we removed the slide and all the swings from the playset and put them aside. And it's been a while since they were small enough for that baby swing, so that's gotta go. <laughs> Teardrop. The hardware holding the swings was all rusted up, so I wanted to refurbish them as well. They were held on by long through bolts and I backed them off and was ready to start cleaning the playset. To make cleaning the playset a lot faster, I'm using a pressure washer and I mixed up some multi-purpose cleaner concentrate to help cut through the mildew and grime. The pressure washer I'm using is the Briggs & Stratton Elite 3300 Gas. It can go up to 3300 PSI and it's got these five quick connect spray tips and one of them is made specifically for applying soap and cleaner at low pressure. So I plugged that one into the washer then hooked up my hose to supply the water. Now of course, whenever you're using a pressure washer, you wanna make sure you're wearing the right safety equipment. Goggles are great to help protect your eyes from overspray. I started up the pressure washer and dropped the siphon tube into the bucket of cleaner, which pulls the soap through the line into the sprayer. I started off at the top of the playset and hosed everything down with a good dousing of the cleaner and then let it sit for five minutes to do its thing. While I was waiting, I cleaned out the siphon tube with some clear water and then switched the quick connect tip out to the 40 degree white tip, which is the least aggressive of the bunch. Now, I've never used a pressure washer before, so I wanted to test it out on these rotten boards that I'd removed from the climbing wall. I turned up the pressure until it did a pretty good job of removing all the gunk without stripping the wood. And then the fun began. I started off with the roof, and I was watching the grime and the mildew get blasted away. And this unit has an upgraded 30-foot hose, and it's really flexible, so moving it around the playset was pretty easy. After cleaning the bench, though, I noticed that some mildew was still hanging on the lower boards. So I switched over to the 25 degree green tip to get a little more aggressive spray pattern. Now this did the trick perfectly and the mildew came right off on the second pass. And there's a fine line between removing grime and destroying the fragile wood fibers of a soft wood like cedar or redwood. Make sure you keep the water fan moving at a constant pace. If you slow down or stop in one spot, it can easily gouge the wood and I did this in a few spots that you can see. Now the outer swing set posts were just absolutely disgusting. I gave them the business though, and I was amazed at how quickly the pressure washer cut through this funk. And I wanna say thank you to Briggs & Stratton for sponsoring today's video. There's a link down below in the description and you can see the Elite 3300 gas model that I used and their entire lineup of pressure washers. Now pressure washing the wood does leave it a little bit rough. So I went back and sanded the edges with 150 grit sand block to keep everything nice and smooth. The climbing handholds and the other plastic accessories were really faded from years of being in the sun. I found some matching spray paint and I gave all the parts three coats of paint and then topped it off with three coats of gloss clear coat for protection. For the metal handles, I used some acetone to clean off any dirt and oils and the larger handles had a few rust spots and one end was totally rusted out. I sanded all the loose rust away, then I gave all the handles a coat of rust stopping self etching primer. Then I followed up with the same treatment as the plastic parts with three coats of paint followed by three coats of gloss clear coat. I hope this is going to hold up well and provide many years of protection. 
While I was spraying everything, I moved over to the swing hardware. I sanded all the rusted parts to knock off the loose rust and then primed these also with the self-fetching primer. I top coated these with some aluminum colored spray paint and they looked brand new when I was done. I started trying to refurbish the old swings and bring them back to life with the spray paint, but as I was spraying them I quickly realized it was not going to look great since the plastic was all cracked and the chains had a coating that was kind of falling off. So I threw in the towel and I just went ahead and ordered two new swings. Now the last thing I needed to prep before applying the finish was to cut the replacement boards. I used some inexpensive cedar fence pickets from the home center and cut them to size. Then I sanded them smooth and rounded over the edges with my router. Now it was finally time to put on the new stain and see this playset transform. I started at the top and I sprayed on a semi-transparent stain and sealer combo. I sprayed on a light to medium coat then I back brushed it with a chip brush to even out any puddling or drips. Now this approach worked really well and spraying the finish on went quickly with this sprayer. The sprayer I'm using here is the Finish Max HVLP from Homerite. It's an inexpensive electric sprayer and it runs off an extension cord. The material cup isn't huge, so you do have to refill it often, but that keeps it light and it's perfect for jobs like this when you need to put down the finish fast. I'll have a link down below in the description you can check that out as well. Now you can see even from the first coat what a difference the stain made to the play gym. The wood was really dry and thirsty so the first coat soaked in fast. One thing to look out for is when you spray on top of hardware like the bolt heads. If you don't wipe it off quickly it's going to dry on there and it's going to look bad. So I carried a shop towel in my pocket and I wiped the heads off after I sprayed a section. I applied two coats in all and after a day of drying I started reassembling everything. When you disassemble, I'd recommend using some Ziploc bags and labeling the fasteners. It would have made this part go a lot faster because I just had a jumble of screws and fasteners I had to sort through as I was mounting everything. But everything slid into place. While I was waiting for the new swings to arrive, I did some reading and found recommendations for swing set widths and distances from each other and from the structure. So I drilled some new holes to move the brackets and decided to only use two swings here versus three and you may want to wear a dust mask while drilling overhead. I reinstalled the hardware, but I only put four of them back up to hold the two swings, so they'd have plenty more room to swing between them. The sun set on me that day, but the next day I finished up the final pieces. I reinstalled all the climbing wall handholds, and man did they look great against that fresh stain. For the repair pieces at the bottom, I drilled out two new holes in each one of the boards for the handholds. Then I hammered in the threaded inserts into the back and attached the boards to the climbing wall with deck screws. I finished it off by securing the handholds with new bolts and washers. The swings arrived and I hung them up on the set. The chain was a bit too long so I adjusted them up and I'll come back and cut the excess chain off when I can borrow some bolt cutters. I put the finishing touches on the play set and it was all wrapped up. After looking at the before pictures and the videos, I'm really just amazed at how drastic of a difference this is. The playset really does look brand new from a distance, and close up there's still some chips and bruises, but the stain, the paint job, and the new swings have given this playset a new lease on life. Hold on before you go. You might want to check out that video right there. YouTube says it's the best one for you, and I think you're going to like it. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.